Shivani, and I'm going to be talking about how social media has a negative impact on the health of our body. So I'm going to be making a few points. Um, social media can affect your health physically, it can affect your psychological health, and it can also increase the likelihood of you developing <coughs> symptoms of an eating disorder. So social media platforms are widespreadly used, as all of us probably already know. So Healthline stated that 77% of all Americans have some type of social media platform. Mm -hmm. And because of this, social media can lead to stress and other psychological symptoms such as depression. And it doesn't mean that you're going to actually develop um, and be diagnosed with it, but you can develop symptoms that can like um, exasperate over time. So in a study done by the University of Pennsylvania, they took 143 students and they split them up into two categories. They had an experimental group that was limited to 30 minutes of social media use a day. And that was split between three platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat. And they were only allowed to be on each for 10 minutes. So total they were had a 30 minute um, time limit and the other group was able to continue their habits as they had so they were just going about their day as they normally do using their media outlets whenever they wanted um, and before the experiment had began they created a baseline test to dip, see how people actually had symptoms or stuff beforehand to get a good read on it um, so they tested for like people having uh, levels of loneliness anxiety depression self-esteem issues like self-acceptance and because of that um, once the experiment was over they found that the experimental group had their levels of depression symptoms and loneliness both declined drastically and this was able to be seen easily because the group of 143 students that they had in the beginning had higher levels of depression symptoms so the decline was really drastic and it was able to be seen easily and according to the ADAA, studies have shown that 20% of people with social media platforms can't go more than three hours without checking them. And people who um, have these platforms, 30% of them can spend more than 15 hours a week online. And that is just the minimum is 15 hours, so people spend way more than that. And that can kind of show how much people um, use these outlets, and that is how it's affecting it. So secondly, I'd like to address how social media can increase the likelihood of eating disorders. And this doesn't mean that you're going to develop one, but it just increases the likelihood of you developing symptoms. Um, so social media can obviously cause some body image issues. So there was a study done by the Royal Public um, Health Society, and they asked 1,500 people uh, to track their moods while they were using these social media outlets. And 7 out of 10 people said that Instagram made them feel some type of... Um, body image issue and that Instagram and Facebook exasperated their feelings of anxiety. Um, so this basically showed that like when they were on these outlets that everything that they were seeing was giving them some kind of troubling um, thoughts and like some issues with themselves. Um, secondly, it can lead to uh, some symptoms of eating disorders. So Pittsburgh University did a study with 1,765 American adults, and they had them answer a questionnaire beforehand about their social media usage, and so they can help develop their risk of catching symptoms of an eating disorder. And their findings revealed that subjects who spent more than um, more engaged time with social media had 2.2 um, times the likelihood of developing symptoms of these kinds of disorders, such as anorexia or like bulimia. And um, it also showed that people who checked frequently weekly had 2.6 times the risk, showing that people who are using these outlets have a higher chance of them um, developing the symptoms that come with um, these eating disorders. And lastly, I'd say that social media can impact the body physically. So it can really strain your body, just you can't, like it uh, can accumulate over time. So Dr. Ishwar, uh, he's an orthopedic specialist at the BLK Soup uh, Specialty Hospital. He said that prolonged use of social ad, uh, media platforms and gadgets can have an ill effect on your bones and joints. So you can develop like carpal tunnel syndrome, um, you can have tendon inflammation, you can have cubital tunnel syndrome, so that's like pain within your, like, your joints, your thumbs. There's something called tester's thumb that if you're using your phone a lot, um, you can have joint pain right there. And you can also develop chronic neck pain, which is um, cervical spondylitis, which is when your neck is in the certain position for a really long time. Um, and lastly, social media can also cause uh, sleep deprivation and loss of sleep. So how many of you guys, the first thing you do when you get into bed at night, right before you fall asleep, scroll through your Instagram or Snapchat? Yeah, me too. And then how about when you wake up in the morning, and what's the first thing you guys do? Check your phone, like your Instagram or Snapchat. 
Um, so based off of that, it's, there's a research done by the University of Pittsburgh, and they took 1,700 students, and they, well not students, they took people ages from 18 to 30, and they had them um, talk about their sleeping habits and how much social media and um, phone uses that they have right before they're falling asleep. And they found that there was a link between the, um, the sleep disturbances that they had had and um, their usage because people who were doing this were online right before falling asleep and that blue light in um, the devices had an impact on their relaxation and um, they spent a lot of time um, like trying harder to fall asleep. Um, and lastly, like so that, that way, um, the social media sites had a higher predictor of disturbed sleep because of the usage. So overall, because of symptoms such as these, like psychological health problems, um, physical health problems, and just the ability to develop symptoms, this is why social media like usage, a lot of it is having a negative impact on our health and body. I think I've mentioned this a couple times before. Uh, people have a tendency to turn their proposition into a question or make it sound like an informative speech by putting a question at the beginning uh, or the word that might make it sound like a question. You're going to tell us how social media has a negative impact on our health. No, 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 that's an informative speech. You're going to make a declarative statement. Social media has a negative impact on our health. Let's get rid of this how thing. That's not necessary. Uh, and that also happened on a couple of the secondary points. Uh, your first, your preview, I know there's a preview, but it was so rushed that I had no idea what the first point was. I started writing down the third point barely before you got started in developing the content of the speech. So I think you need to pace yourself a little bit more moderately at the beginning of the speech. I know you have a lot of material that you're trying to cover. You probably need to reduce the amount of detail in describing the studies so that you have more time to explain what the inferences are that we're drawing from those studies. Um, there is a structure, though, in the speech. I could follow that. I at least got the second and the third points in the body of the speech uh, cited pretty clearly. Uh, although it did sound like there was also a fourth point that you added because um, it seemed like the sleep deprivation point at the end was like its own separate uh, category, and that wasn't in the preview. It did, I didn't know that it was coming. Uh, it could probably fit into that third point, but it should be a little bit clearer how this is, in, how this is going together. Uh, you did cite the sources of your information pretty uh, effectively. Uh, there's, you describe the studies, like I said, sometimes the description of the studies is a little bit more involved, and we need to get maybe to the conclusions of the studies a little bit more, especially since you're trying to pack so much information information in. Um, there's, there's some causality claims that will probably be the basis of an argument when the refutation speaker comes along. Uh, for instance, the reason that there might be a two and a half times or a greater chance of somebody having the symptoms of these uh, eating disorders, it might have more to do with that, and that's the reason that they're checking their, their platforms so frequently, as opposed to they check the platforms, and that causes them to have two and a half times the risk. It's it's one of those things, you know, which is the cause and which is the effect sort of thing. You know, which came first, the chicken or the egg? And I think that this one doesn't really answer that particular question. Uh, there's some information on the fourth point or the third point, uh, the second part of the third point, about uh, blue light that doesn't really get explained. It's kind of rushed into the presentation. I think it's part of your argument, but it's, it's, it sounds like it's really a separate section that's going on there. Um, the presentation, like I said, uh, I know you've got a lot of information and you're rushing to get in as much as you can, and that's a little bit of a problem. Is that all in for me then? Thank you. <laughs>